But with no further ado, we've got Captain Jason Stock right here, guys. Yeah, so, you know, I've been coming here for a while and talking about a lot of different fishing from back in the days, kayak fishing to inshore fishing and offshore fishing. But, you know, we're definitely in a special area where we have those options depending on what the weather's doing. But uh, obviously right now, it's summertime, it's hot, and it's nice right now. You look out the window, you're like, all right, it's calm. And a couple hours ago, I was on Cabby's by the uh, John Pass, which used to be the Gators, and that was a nasty squall that came through today, like around like 12, one o'clock, so we all know the deal, it's sketchy, you gotta watch your radar, wake up, is it raining, is it not, what's the weather, you know, the, definitely this time of year, I, I stress it to all my clients, is I gotta make the call the night before and then confirm in the morning. You know, you have your game plan, but, things can change and definitely with these sketchy storms which honestly it's been a very this summer's been a weird one with like not much rain at all and it just recently i feel like the past week the thunderstorms just started popping and uh we've all been in them if we've been on the water a bunch and it's sketchy <laughs> if you get caught in a lightning storm and either got to punch through it or run around it or whatever you got to do but you know the biggest thing you know I always stress to my clients this time of year is stay hydrated and uh, drink a bunch of water Gatorades and I mean if they're drinking beers you're like drink some beers drink some waters and you don't want anybody to get heat exhaustion because I've had people you know you're like you're all right and they're like yeah I'm good and they start puking or whatever you're like all right but Obviously the heat is real. We all know that. Floridians, but definitely stay hydrated and focus on what you're trying to do. Um, going into the different species, I mean, this time of year we know, uh, I still got red snapper till the 25th, because I'm a federal permitted vessel. Uh, red grouper obviously closed. Gags are coming in September 1st. Amberjack are in until like the 25th or yeah, it's soon, like 25th. Um, you know, I honestly haven't been messing with them too much. I know they're on some of the deeper wrecks. They do the red snapper deal in the permit, mangrove, yellowtail. Uh, you know, they've said, like, I heard something crazy. We have, like, a record temperature, 150 years or something wild or whatever, but it's summer, the end uh, with that. But there's still fish to catch. Uh, Definitely some of my primary species lately has been the permit, mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper. We've had to let go a lot of red grouper, uh, red snapper, and the sharks have been crazy. I mean, everybody's talking about the sharks, but even lately we get on a good red snapper spot, I'll tell the guys, like, all right, guys, don't tell me how big they are until they're in the boat, you know, because everybody, as soon as they boat up on a nice fish, oh my God, so big. You know, try to tell them to keep coming. And the sandbar sharks the past couple of years are definitely relentless. You know, as we all know, you pull up heads and, you know, they look like the bull sharks, but they got the wide fins and uh, they're definitely smoking a lot of the red snapper, red grouper, mangrove, yellowtail, this and that. But, you know, they got to eat too. So, part of the deal and part of the ecosystem. Um, Definitely been a lot of mahi around this year too. It seemed like about a month ago there was a lot of the mahi and not not the tiny you know chickens. Some were the decent ones and some bigger ones, but you know some tuna. We had a couple wahoo this summer. Um, you know, mixing the troll in between spot spot, kind of break it up any debris. Um, you know, so. Anybody got any questions starting off? <laughs> so if you are trying to target mangrove snappers, can you like dial in mangrove snappers versus American Red? Because trying to get past American Red to catch a mango can be a challenge. Um, focus on the mangrove snapper, definitely. I mean, I'll focus more on the ledges or certain wrecks or reefs where they're at. 
and then basically the chum bag and chum in, you know, cutting up thread fins, or a lot of that fry baits around right now. You know, really to do it properly this time of year, we'll get like a, I got one of those three sixteens cast net, and we'll load up on those small little fry bait. Then you don't have to even cut bait, and you can just sprinkle, you know, a small fry bait. Chum slick, get them fired up, and then put them on a jig head or a free line, depending on what the current's doing. You know the way it is out there in the golf. Like one day, the, you know, or even a spot, you run to one spot and the current's ripping Mach 10. Like last week, it was smoking, and then you run a couple miles away and there's like barely any current. Or around the moons, you know, you got fast current. So you know, the jig head definitely is the deal. And, if you're going to target mangoes like like tomorrow, like how deep you fish it, like general range for mangoes? Um, I mean, we've had some big ones as shallow as 60 foot. I mean, honestly, there's a lot in the passes right now for a lot of the boats that are, if you're inshore, all the passes seem to be loaded. Like down by my way, like Bean Point and Egmont area, they're solid. And also like the reefs up by like Port Manatee and uh, you know, all the stuff up in the bay seem to be if you want to stay in the bay, it's solid as can be. A lot of that fry baits everywhere. Skyway, flats, um, you know, I mean, baits kind of everywhere, but offshore, where I like to get them better is like 100 to 130 foot, you know, the nicer mangroves, right. where you can get numbers. And, I saw know. a pretty big one you caught last week. Yeah, we had a good little rally a couple of days ago. Uh, it was on a permit bite, and I thought it was a big gag. And it was like a nine pound mango on one of the shallow wrecks, just random. And then we had another one in the queue that smoked it, but uh, you know, we caught more, but it's crazy. Like the biggest thing is I was talking to a group over here is like uh, basically, you know, with the heat, you're not gonna have those all day rallies where you just sit on one spot and kind of catch what you need. You just gotta keep moving. You know, don't sit on the spot if it's not happening. Or if the sharks show up and they're eating you up, just leave. You know, don't sit there and just like, ah, we can get a couple more. It's like, once they key in on the snappers, move on. You know, because you're just gonna keep feeding to the predators. And, you know, I'll be in the realm and, you know, stop off in some of the wrecks and springs and stuff and be like, I'll go through the, you know, kind of like the ride act, like, all right guys, like we're gonna pull up on the spot be ready, you know, like the critters are gonna be there. You got kudas, sharks, you know, and uh, the goliaths that are gonna wanna smoke your fish. So if you don't keep them coming at a fast rate, you're just gonna keep feeding the predators and you're not gonna catch anything and you're gonna be disappointed. So obviously bringing the appropriate tackle, you know, you know, with the snapper, obviously their eyesight, you gotta use the lighter leader, you know, 20, 20, I mean, you can go lighter, but you're gonna pop them off a lot of times. See, like 20 pounds, kind of the lightest I'll go, because I've done the light stuff, like the 15 and all that, and you get them close to the boat and they pop anyway, so kind of defeats the purpose. But 20, 25, it seems to be a good medium, you know, leader size, we can still make it happen, rather than just breaking them off or feeding the predator. How long of a leader are you Long, like 15, 20 feet. You know, if I can help it. I mean, some of them get shorter, but like, you'll look at it and be like, all right, that guy's getting a little short. Let's retire them. <laughs> I feel like, another one, another one fed the predators. But, I mean, it's part of the ecosystem, too. Yes, sir. So, we've got a lot of captains in here. I'm inshore, not just a fisherman. So, talk to me about water temperatures, times, places, and species. Okay. In any order. And what? In any order. In order. Obviously, the, the water temperature is hot. Like we we've been seeing, it's like 87 to like 92 degrees um, time of day. I'd say sunrise, sunset, definitely going to be the most optimal. But sometimes on those tide changes, you know, kind of chill out. Like for offshore, I've noticed like it'll be ripping sometimes in the morning, and then like kind of big day, it will slow down, and then you get a little rally. Um, inshore, I'd say around the passes too, like. Any pass around here, you know, Lines Pass, Pass the Grill, you know, uh, the the snapper fishing is going to be good. I mean, snapper is kind of the savior in the summer for mangrove snapper. 
the token fish, you can still catch them and, you know, they're still going to bite in the heat. Like, like what I was getting at is the permit, snapper, and yellowtail kind of been my savior in the summer. What are you saying with stuck or red? Um, I mean, it's a lot of smith, but they, they definitely go a little bit more lethargic. I mean, they're around the passes, the big ones. I mean, on those outgoing tides, for sure. And you're saying tides, outgoing tides in the passes are going to be stacked up and all of them. You know, you know uh, I've seen John's pass, Wine's pass, Pass Row, around here. Solid. Bait? Bait, white bait, you know. Um, for me, offshore, I want the bigger baits, you know, but. The fish get lazy too. They they like the they like the dead bait too a lot of times. You know the cut bait, cut red thing, or getting the small bait with the three sixteenths or quarter inch mesh. The thing is with the quarter quarter inch mesh this time of year, it'll kill a lot because there's a lot of the tiny ones in there too. No matter where you're getting them, you know you got the Christmas tree going on. It's a, there's a big mixture this time of year. Fry bait to medium to large. You know obviously you want them to be that size all the time, but this time of year it's like this to this to this. <laughs> you got a big mixture. And I mean, even on the beach, sometimes you'll stumble on a great tartan bite this time of year with that fry bait. You know, if you're cruising the beach and those red minnows, the blood minnows, and you know, the tartan can be in there, mackerel, bonita, you know, blue runners and stuff like that, a little action, sharks. But uh, we really haven't had much weather this summer, it seems like. I mean, think about it, like, no real rain, like, I mean, we've had it like the past week, but relatively speaking, like normally summertime, you look in the, you know, the east and there's like a big giant thunderstorm coming, you're like, all right guys, we gotta go. There wasn't many of that this year, if you think about it. Never really got chased off of the tarpon grounds. Yeah, thunderstorm. no. So, I mean, we need that too to cool down the water, so. Even my buddy said he's like they call it a rain average for a reason so i feel like the next couple months we're definitely gonna get some rain <laughs> like they've said with like the the day's weather page or whatever they said with the el nino who knows but i guess like fall winter fall you know on is going to be a lot of moisture so i guess we're going to get a later but you know what you gonna do you just kind of work around it but uh Definitely watch that weather because, I mean, we've known this time of year, people, you know, don't pay attention to those storms that are out there in the Gulf. You look at the radar in the morning, you see the big, you know, orange reds out there. I mean, we all have a phone. My radar is what I use personally. I think it seems to be very accurate, you know, and obviously we got Bay News 9, very accurate as well. So you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. You know, I look at Noah and, wind alert and my radar and honestly between those three you can kind of formulate a game plan of like all right this is what it's going to be like today even when the client's like fired up like hey looks good i'm like nah it's west 15 to 20 i was like dude you really don't want to go today you start right out of the gate just charging into it that's a long day we all know and i mean a lot of times it seems like normal years when we have that southwest flow it's a little bit more tropical and we only had a couple days this year, but years past, you wake up in the morning with the southwest flow and you know they're coming up from offshore and they're hitting the coast and then they blow up and you know formulate like a, a super storm. But, yes sir, Amanda. Are you still catching African pompano? Um, I haven't really been messing with African pompano lately. We had an awesome winter on them. Um, the big thing is a lot of the critter holes have been super gnarly with the sharks and coos, so I've kind of, I'll slide in there for a little bit and see if my clients can handle it, and if they're losing a lot of fish, I'll just leave. Um, but they're still there, obviously, but I feel like I don't want to keep feeding the predators. When you're on a raft, like you're coming here with all those predators, are you still throwing jump out? Yes, I am, yeah. I'm throwing it like a, I use the Manhattan chum, got like this big, you know, QS style, you know, round, just sprinkle that, chum, and, and I, honestly, like, I'll kind of check the spots for a little bit and see what's going on, like, a lot of times we'll permit fish, I'll throw out a couple crabs, see what's up with that, get a couple fly lines going, you know, do a couple bottom rigs, have one guy in the jig head doing that deal, and see what kind of, like, feel it out, 
see what's kind of happening. But like this time of year too, I'll come up on one and we'll set up on them. And nowadays we got the troll motors, which make it crazy easy to set up on spots. And if it ain't happening, I'll just kind of keep moving on. Or if it's just you're like, all right, guys, we're not winning. Here. We gotta keep going. Or even clients just some days are still catching barracuda, sharks, and goliaths. So I'm like, all right, you know. Or you got the meat hunters, they're like, we need snapper, we need this, you know, but obviously with the red grouper clothes, it, you know, pretty much leaves like the snapper is like the the meat fish, you know what I mean? You know, for, you know, you have your tuna or this and that, maybe possibility, but it's still pretty, we had a couple, a couple weeks ago we had a good tuna rally, but a lot of bonita, there was a lot of frothing bonita, about a month ago, like, you can see them on all that fry bait. It's like micro bait this time of year. It's like pull up on it, and everything's erupting. We've all seen it running out there in the Gulf. But there, there could be tuna in that, but a lot of you'll see the sharks get keyed in on as well. But you know, up on the surface, just aggressively feeding on it, which is cool. We had a pretty impressive uh, migration of whale sharks, like the end of May and the beginning of June down. Out and down south, not much, but I mean, a lot of guys will fish out this area. But, anyways, uh, one day we saw eight, another day there was two, another day there was two. Pretty neat, you know. Obviously, it's a special time to see a whale shark, but the one day I had veterinarians and a pest control guy, and they were all geeked out. And it, it was Kobe on them, which was cool. And a lot of, a lot of whale sharks, and actually, I watched something on the Discovery Channel and Matt Geo, or, but they said that the they're here eating snapper eggs, and you can actually the, those days I saw the whale sharks actively feeding, that you could see like a sheen on the water, and they were just grubbing on the eggs. So I mean, there's some crazy stuff going on in the Gulf that you know if you see it, you're kind of like, whoa, what's this? And then you kind of you figure out the correlation, but it's a pretty cool migration. They do. I mean, obviously, there's a guy that's been tagging them. This guy, Alex Boggs, is up in the Panhandle. He's uh, heavy on the artificial reefs for Okaloosa County, and they've been tagging them, and they're trying to figure out the migration. But it's just like anything nowadays. We're dialing in these fish. We're dialing in these animals, whatever you want to call them, and just basically we're figuring out more and more. And I mean, I mean that's why I think the regulations are coming down because we're we're definitely taking them out. How far off were they? Uh 30 miles. Yeah. So they were like in that 30, 35 mile zone. Yeah. It seems like that's where they come into, like in that it always seems like for me, May. May is like their year. Like you kinda feel like you'd be creeping around looking for them in May, like that's your best opportunity to see them out there before it gets too warm and I mean, the Gulf's really alive, and I feel like, man, you got everything. You got sailfish, tuna, wahoo, snapper, you know, the red grouper fishing was still really good. Um, and then the red snapper coming for us on June 1st, and we're able to fish for that. You know. Uh, we had some cobia around with the whale sharks. Um, lately, no, we haven't had cobia recently, but I feel like. I was looking at some pictures last year. We had some big ones that were on sharks and stuff like that. Like if you were catching like a lot of red grouper when they were open, you would catch like big dog, you know, 50 to 60 pound cobia or 40. Nice ones, big dog. That were just hanging with the sharks. So, I mean, a lot of the, the guys in the East Coast, I mean, they'll chum up the sharks now. Over there on the East Coast, some, some of the crazy guys will go in there and spear them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I'm out on that. <laughs> you know, like, you know, yeah, we, had, we had some good mud bites. I mean, just a handful here and there. Some some surprising. You know, a lot of people said after Hurricane Ian, we had more tropical fish come up. Like even a couple of days ago on one of the wrecks, we caught a yellow jack. You know, normally we don't see that 15 miles out, you know, from the Keys, straight yellow jack, sushi style fish. Um, we did get some more blacks this year. They said a lot of that, you know, the waves got so gnarly, like even 
I went to an artificial reef like Summit Eel and Palmetto, and they said there was a wave recorded in Naples that was 50 foot tall. 50 foot, yeah. like think about that, that's a straight tsunami. So they even said like a lot of the artificial reefs down there just got straight level, like blew them out. You know, like so a lot of the concrete structures, like here we got our Skyway Bridge rubble and culverts and reef balls and you know wrecks and stuff like that. But you gotta imagine a 50 foot wave and those fish knew was up. So a lot of fish shift up this way and a lot of guys have been saying, yes, they've been getting more mutton snapper, true blacks, and even some dog snapper, like some big dogs, just random. But, uh, you know, we definitely travel around the Gulf a lot. I guess that we've been alive for hundreds of years and figured it out, but <laughs> only here for so long. You know? Yes, sir. The Chippewa Channel, yeah, pretty much like most of the time, south or southwest. Yeah, so I run into either Southwest Pass or uh, Bean Point. You know, <coughs> pretty much I don't go north of the channel a whole lot. Occasionally, you know, red snapper fishing stuff like that. It seems that way, yeah. Especially on a lot of springs and deeper wrecks and stuff like that. Muttons, yellowtails. Um, uh, I like a two watt of Shaw C K hook, yeah. Uh, a lot of times I'll put a split shot or a three line or cork it. it. Really depends on the current and just doing a natural drift over the racks, reefs, springs. You know, some of the real calm days, like when the crabs are out there, we had a couple of really epic days where like they were popping them on the surface. You'll see them just come up, pop them, and just like throw it in there and hook up. But it's like quick little be ready or setting up and you know get little rallies like for example a couple days ago I was like set up on the spot first cast boom second cast boom it was a quick little deal and then move to another one move out deeper nothing come back in shallower little rally and see him kind of pop on top and I mean for you know the heat my clients were stoked they got some snapper to eat they got some thermo to catch and they're like we're tired let's go you know so yeah, absolutely. So, a fish to catch that's strong, beautiful, this and that. I mean, I didn't even mention the glides too much, but a lot of people love the glides this time of year. For for a large fish, you know. Yeah, for fun and a big fish to catch. Yes, sir. Are you still handlining? Yeah, we're doing the handline. I, I, occasionally, some guys will get lucky and catch them on like one of the grouper rods, and you're just like, good luck, dude. <laughs> Everybody will kind of help each other out and kind of trade spots. And, I feel like you lose a lot of hooks. So. Yeah, yeah, the hand line's fun. And I feel like it's the easiest on the fish. And you know, you catch them, they get their picture, and they're stoked. And kind of normally, like, everybody get with this? And then, all right, let's keep going. Did you say you were using those O'Shaughnessy's for the permit? Yes. Why do you like that? I just, they don't, they don't really bend, and it's like perfect. It's like a little two eye hook, hook it in the corner, you know. I mean, we caught big Kobe on the two, like, one day we caught one 85 pounds on a crab and it didn't even bend it. So it's like, it's a strong hook, it's money, you know, they fight it, just come tight. Predominantly we're pretty much catch and release, but I'll let clients keep going. So, you know, the meat hunters are like, oh, can we keep it? Can we keep it? I'm like, you know, normally we let this go, but we're not going for dinner. Whatever. Even, uh, I used to tag a bunch for Bonefish Tarpon Trust. And, they kind of want to be put one of the letters, like, hey, I'll catch and release. I'm like, that eh, kind of be a hypocrite because some of my clients have been fishing me. They're like, oh, I just want to take one home for dinner. And I'm fine with that. It's like, I don't need to grease like our boat limit of them, you know, just let them know. People are satisfied and happy with, you know, catching a trophy fish. Some of the big dogs, you know, the 30, 40 pounders, they fight, you know. Yeah, I'll spin the tackle. What's that? Anybody else got any questions? How far out are you going for Wahoo? I mean, uh, the shallowest we caught him this year was probably 35 miles. Uh, it seems like for my charters, like 35 to like 65 miles. It's kind of the zone where we get 
but like it, it's definitely not like a everyday deal but we've got lucky we got one like 93 pounds and then i was a big dog it was awesome it just like swam up to the boat just like a black dragon it's just like ready to go picked up the rod with wire and flipped it to him and ate it but uh you know a lot of times we're trolling just kind of between spot to spot you know hang on the dream for you know the wahoo but we get tuna and, you know sailfish or dolphins stuff like that and it kind of breaks up especially when the crew's kind of a little tired and like man we're kind of wore out from that spot if we just chill for a second like, yeah i'll troll for a little bit and, you know go a couple miles and set up on the next spot you're not targeting a specific structure or anything to find yeah you? i mean i'll go over a structure like good ledges uh vermilion stacks it seems like sometimes they're on those around the wrecks and springs i mean a lot of the wrecks and springs that you got to battle the cougars and stuff like that so you can you know keep going over it you really want to he about the same distance out you know mahi seems to like they started out i mean it was something like 15 miles to all the way out so that water shifts a lot and then you know if you have a garmin they have that garmin fish mapping too it actually shows you on the chart and honestly it's pretty accurate so you you know you get it you have a subscription i have the garmin weather as well it's like xm weather so you can look at it it overlays over your chart plotter so again with these storms you can see where you're getting yourself into is it going to be nasty am i going to be okay for safety that's obviously important but with the garmin fish mapping a lot like the the green will be like the kingfish color, the orange will be like mahi, pink will be wahoo, and it shows you that good water where there's a lot of, you know, activity, and it does take some of the guessing area, because sometimes they'll be enclosed. And like, late, or I'm sorry, spring to summer, I mean, the fish are in that mid-range, and then as it gets hotter, they go out, and it's more random or around like a, a good spot or you know obviously a lot too there's a lot of different variables to i feel like there's the wagon here but so i'm trying to get more reefs and fads going out here so we have more areas to target these species and kind of take a little pressure off the bottom fish too it's this long term i mean we've seen it it's happened our bottom fishery is getting closed down let's be honest like we've seen it just I mean, the gags, like, we've got its gag season September 1st to, like, November 15th. I mean, back in the days, what was it? <laughs> five, five person, or, like, I mean, year-round, but like, we've seen the progression. I mean, there's a lot of people fishing, there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of inv advancements, but, you know, we still got to protect the resource, but... Uh, it's going to be a long plane. I went to some of those meetings and, you know, the, the data is... Gags change sex, they say like 36 to 38 inches. So anything supposedly under that, like they, they have a statistic and they, they get the samples. Those are all, under that size, are all females. Once they get to like that 36 to 38 inches, they become a male. So there's too many females, not enough males. And that's where they're concern for the population long term which i mean that's something to think about i mean everybody wants to go deep when they when they open up and catch the big rusties and i mean i mean commercial fishing you've seen it you know I mean, not as many big daddies as we used to see back in the days right so i mean yeah you gotta go deeper <laughs> That's the, that's the thing, you just gotta go deeper, farther, and more of a conquest, and <laughs> more of a journey, but I mean, another day you're still trying to catch fish, but... No, I mean, pretty much most of my features, I mean, I'm in that 70 miles, and, you know, I feel like red snapper, red grouper, mangoes, do some trolls, do some things, and just there. I think that's a lot. You know? Honestly, I felt bad for it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm stoked, obviously, when you get out of this, but I, I definitely don't just focus on what I used to. Everybody, was, well, especially they closed down a lot of species. I mean, they didn't have too many other options.
Anybody else got any questions? Um, I, I like to use like my buddy makes these rods. They're like eight and a half foot custom rods, so you got a nice bend to them. I'm using the Saragosas, like 30 pound braid, 25 pound leader, um, little J hook, split shot, um, or free line or cord. Um, Saragosa is like 10, I feel like the 10,000s to like the 14s. I don't like to use the real light stuff because it usually gets smoked in the rack a lot or even the juice fish. And I mean, it still gives them a good fight. They're getting buckled. Usually people are like worn out. But yeah, when they're straight up and down, they think they're done. And I was like, this is when it gets real. When their fish is running out, you know, you're just kind of let him do his deal. When it gets down, you know, straight over top of the rack, you're like, all right, you got to keep working them. Otherwise, you know, break off. But, um, I've, I've learned to not go super light on the, the real size. They get smoked with people just reeling against the drag. And the gear ratio is far stronger and the line retrieval is much better. Like back in the days, you know, do the inshore stuff and some of the offshore stuff and bring some of the inshore gear out there. And you're just not good. You're just gonna break off the big dog, you know, so. I've learned over time to go bigger on the real size and then lighter leader to catch the fish and you can still have a shot, you know what I mean? Rather than go light and the inshore tackle, and smoke the reel, lose the fish, yeah, game over. <laughs> like I don't want to be out there with a 3,000 and hook a giant permit and you have no control over it. But you have a shot, but not the greatest shot. So yeah, um, I mean, really going into the, you know, the rest of the, the season here, we got, you know, obviously gag September 1st, um, still got a little bit of amberjack left, and then I heard the Santa's offered the red snapper seasons on the weekend, so that's good for everybody to get out and enjoy the red snapper fishery still. How many months, or how many weeks are we doing? That's solid. You know, gets everybody fired up. It's funny, like, once you close something out and you bring it back, everybody's, like, jacked up to go again. <laughs> it's like the way the season's like, ah, oh, they're in season. Everybody's, like, re-inspired to go fishing again. You notice that? <laughs> and even sometimes when the weather's rough, I'm like, yeah, I gotta go red snapper fishing. I'm like, do you look at that forecast? Like, I got some of my buddies, I'm like, dude, don't go. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It looks beautiful. And they call me there, like, Dude, I went in. It was rough. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what, was it really worth it for those couple red snapper? Like, nah, I'm out. <laughs> so watch that weather still, especially going into the next couple months. Um, obviously, we've got the fall, the kingfish season. You guys got, when's the king of the beach this year? November 11th, yeah, so hopefully it's a heavy, heavy season. You know, but. It's crazy how every, every different year you got the weather. I know you guys get stressed out coming up to the King of the Beach. <laughs> it's going to be not too rough, but rough enough and not slick off. <laughs> That's what you want, right? It's like the Hansel and Gretel of the Kingfish tournament. <laughs> <Just, just>, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, it keeps changing every day, but yeah, it's not over the top like it was years past. Anyways, anybody else got any more questions or anything? Yes, sir. You were talking about you use a J-hook on the permits. What's the real, like, rule for circle? I mean, that's the thing is it kind of gets in, like, like, if you're, like, bottom fishing, you know, you're supposed to use a circle hook, but, like, I mean, not necessarily bottom fishing. It's more of a surface fish. I mean, I find it to be a gray area personally, but, like, I've just been using that hook because I feel like they won't bend it out. You know, a lot of like the, the light wire, like the Mutus and stuff like that, I've seen they just come back straight out all the way. Because you're putting a lot of heat on because you gotta fight them out of the wreck. The two odd mustad O'Shawn seems like two like that big things of money, a little light baby. It seems like that that one's been my go to for years. And it's solid. Uh, I'm not, not kayak fishing anymore. No, no. 
retired from there. I, Tom used to always mess with me every time he was paddling along. But uh, I still enjoy it, but there's only so much time in the day, right? <laughs> still got to make the boat payment. <laughs> Adult stuff, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm working on uh, getting more artificial reefs uh, out here in the, the Gulf Coast. Uh, actively working with Manatee County and uh, one of my board members, Angela Collins, she works for Sea Grant. And uh, it's a lot of permitting and it's a lot, you know, basically touch and go. You know, we've been surveying areas and down south by us, like close to the fin barge, we had this area surveyed uh it's basically two miles southwest of the fin barge and you know they have to survey the bottom to make sure there's no live bottom there to not interfere with what's going on so the materials they're fine with are concrete and steel not fiberglass boats not random tires obviously what they do like they're pulling all those out but yeah uh some of the materials were working with is like even uh, right there by the Skyway, by the South uh, Rest Area, Living Shoreline Solutions, they put that then, I don't know if you guys have seen that, they did it as like a break wall. And uh, I mean, when you think about it, when we get like a heavy south wind, that that's gonna just basically, it slows down the turbulence up against the interstate essentially. But they said they would help out with that. And uh, I got this guy over in Port Manatee, I went to his property and he has a marine construction business and he's got culverts and you know all of it stacked up you know 100 yards long you know 20 feet high but again we're in the permitting process and it's slow <laughs> you know i'm a fisherman i was like let's let's get it going you know and, all right well you gotta talk to this person and we're working on it actively though so it'll be exciting because a lot of the reef projects could I basically halted in the past 35, 40 years. So, um, you know, up north uh, by the Panhandle, the Okaloosa County guy, again, I was talking about him earlier, Alex Fogg, I've been talking with him, and they got it going on. They, they got a lot of the money from you know, BP to feed, to make the artificial reefs, so they, and they got it for the tourism, so. We're working with uh, a lot of different organizations, so if anybody got any ideas, give me a shout. How can we help? What's that? Can we help? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, it's like a, I mean, the one reef we got, we started to go fund me for the guy, Soul Man, and then uh, I just got the 501C activated, so I'm able to take taxable donations. So, so working through it. Can you find that on your website? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so if anybody wants to give me a shout or you know talk to me afterwards, I'll be hanging out, so no problem. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's fullsendreefhabitat.org. And uh, that's, that's my website, but yeah, that, that's my charter website, but yeah, I can talk to whoever if anybody wants to, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like even I, I'm really pushing the fads. Like I talked to the guy Hilton. You know, he does them up in Texas, and he said those are about 100 grand to get the fads. And you know, so Galati already bought some fads up there in Texas, and, and talked with Galati and you know a lot of the different boat organizations that are fired up on it. So definitely need to get something going. Maybe King of Beach and get a rail jacked up. It's a it's a process. Like. <laughs> you never like you ready for this? Well, you have to. So like, yeah. Just so you know, it'll be on the you know, it'll be on the navigation chart. As a you know, even like for like the it's something I didn't even really think about. Like even out there in the Gulf, the shrimp boats. You know, they got to know where it's at, so they got to update it and all that. So, which is good. I mean, I I definitely worked a lot of the artificial reefs. You know. I still do. I mean, you can bounce them. I mean, the great, even off St. Pete, you know, South County, TI. I mean, I was fishing South County and Crabtree was with me. I, I see Crabtree lurking in the back. Yeah, you remember that day? We caught a giant sailfish in South County and 
We've got Cobia, Permit, Snapper, Grouper, Goliath. Like, I mean, we need these structures and habitat in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, why not? I mean, if it's basically like you're putting an oasis in the middle of the desert and you got more areas for people to fish and take angling pressure off of certain zones, like long term, I think it's far more beneficial than doing nothing and just crying about we don't have any fish to go target. If you go to an artificial reef, you can catch something and still make, for me, my clients happy and, you know, you catch some fish for dinner or kind of move along and you don't have to sit there and camp out all day and check it out, and swing through, catch a couple fish and be like, everybody good and cruise on the next one. You don't have to make a teepee and kill everything, <laughs> you know, which we've seen. You're like, hey, guy, you got to get off that thing. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Like, if it slows down a little bit, I'm like, alright, let's roll. are like, what? I'm like, yeah, let's roll. You know, it's like, especially when people start doing the, uh, or whatever, they do, like, getting tired and yelling, like, alright, let's go. <laughs> Here's the next one, keep bouncing, you know, keep it, keep it going. Alright, cool. Uh, anybody else got any questions? Alright, I'm gonna hand this over. I'll be hanging out. Thank you for coming out here a long time.